This is section 2, setting up a virtual machine training lab. In this section we will build a complete and full set of CentOS 7 servers, which we will use throughout the entire video training course for all our examples and which we will refer to as our training lab. In order we can do this very quickly, we first prepare our master server template for this lab, then we create our lab of different nodes using this template. Afterwards we are configuring the communication between our nodes of the training lab and finally we create snapshots and back up the machines so we can easily restore them whenever we need to or transfer our complete virtual training lab to a different machine to work there through the entire video training course. Preparing our master server template for this training lab. In this video we are creating a template VM for this training lab. First we are creating some port forwarding rules for external SSH access to this VM. Then we are adding a second virtual network interface using the virtual box graphical user interface. Afterwards we are updating the CentOS 7 system and install some of the most essential Linux tools available. Then we are preparing the VM's file system for creating an image. Finally we create this backup image and take a snapshot. Here follows the demonstration. First, let's make a full clone of our CentOS 7 VM we installed in section 1.3 and which we will build upon in this video. This VM we are cloning contains an untouched CentOS 7 installation, which means it does not contain anything other than the very base system right after installation without any updates or additional programs. We call this new VM our master server. This will be the machine we will work on most of the time throughout this entire course. Click on the reinitialize MAC address to make this machine more unique in your subnetwork. Next, let's configure port forwarding so we can access this VM using the custom port 2222 through our local terminal emulator program and SSH client, which is far more convenient than using the server's console. Also, add a second virtual network interface to our VM we later will configure for internal communication between our different server nodes within our subnetwork and server training lab. In order we can use this, choose internal network here. After cloning has been finished, start this new VM so we can customize it while it is running. Here, wait some time until the machine fully has been started. Now open your favorite local terminal emulator program, for example I use the XFCE4 terminal under Linux. Use the SSH command line client on Linux or OS X or PuTTY on Windows and don't forget to add the custom port 2222 for correct connection to our machine. If you are connecting for the first time, confirm this new connection. As always type in the root password you set up during installation of your CentOS 7 VM. After successfully logging in, type in yum update-y to start automatic updating of all installed packages and system files. This can also include updating the Linux kernel if a new version is available in the repositories. This is most likely always be the case when first time updating right after installation. We will talk more about the yum package manager in an upcoming video in this section. In another section in this video training. If the kernel or glibc library has been updated as in our example, we need to reboot the system in order the changes can take effect. Other packages don't need a reboot. We will do the reboot now. After rebooting let's install some very essential software we need all the time throughout this course, that is Vim, NetTools, Screen, NetCat, rsync, wget and curl. Next we use the dd command to zero out the empty space so we can create a very slim backup image appliance in the next step. Don't forget to delete the zeroed out image so we can use it as free space again. Afterwards shut down the machine so we can create our backup image. Give it a proper name so we can identify it later more easily if we need to restore it. Finally also create a snapshot so we can revert any changes quickly.